Ed DeRosa back with you at Horse Racing Nation HQ. The Paddock Prince with you from, I believe, Oldham County, my home as well. Just miles away, David, and just days away from the Lucas Classic at Churchill Downs. Closing week beneath the Twin Spires. You're probably going to be sorry to see it go. You're having a great meet. Yeah, no, it's been good so far. The all dirt meet has not really been a problem for the winter so far. It um, looks like a good closing weekend. Like you mentioned, the Lucas Classic looks like a really good race because everybody's dodging life is good in New York and they're all coming here. So it looks to be an exciting last five days. All right, we'll get more to the uh, the classic preps in a moment. But as you noted, all dirt at Churchill Downs. And uh, it's been to the benefit of uh, a couple jockeys there. Uh, Corrales, Leperu, uh, Vincent Sh- Chaminade. Uh, should yeah. work on pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I'm glad you did I believe, is mostly at Belterra, but he's been known to, to pick up a mount at Kentucky every now and then. This is September only, uh, but we're not used to, admittedly, as much as I love him, I got to say, we're not used to seeing Leperu's name uh, this much in lights. Yeah, I think Julian has the highest win percentage at Churchill. He's like 7 for 29, and we mentioned him and then Edgar Morales last week on the show, and they had another big week um, as well. Edgar Morales, had, I think he had another stakes win, and he won on that two-year-old steamer. I know he's not on this chart, but for the guys at yeah, Churchill. Was, when I ran this, I was actually expecting him to be on here, so uh, maybe he had a, a light start to the month, but he certainly picked things up lately. Yeah, looks like Ryan Eckleberry's dominating wherever he's riding. Is he um, – he Minnesota. just retired. This was the yeah. That's the what I thought. Song. That's what I thought. Yeah. So yeah, he went out on top. Top percentage. He sure did. And uh, if he was betting his horses, he added to the the nest egg as well. And Geraldo Corrales. I feel like every few weeks I'm mentioning how this guy just does not get bet, and by me included. Like I don't know why I'm not just flat betting Geraldo Corrales because he always shows up on these lists uh you know he's riding for maker i know a little bit which uh, we can look at the trainers i believe mike's uh at the bottom of this list but these are all positive trainer numbers uh ian wilkes surprised me a little bit he's he's had a rough go with his two-year-olds this year but uh he's winning enough with others that he shows up with a positive impact yeah gerardo corrales i think we also mentioned him last week for jockeys he's such an underrated rider and like you said he's riding for maker he's actually riding for maker tomorrow on a horse so he's starting to get some mounts in some bigger barns um yeah and kenny mcpete's no surprise on here he does so well in these fall meets because all the two-year-old races start to stretch out and he's a really good distance trainer and he has his horses ready to run two turns more than most people around here so yeah, none of those stats on that graphic really surprised me for the guys. Safi Josephs, he's done okay for the horses he sent here, but I think everybody on there makes sense. One thing uh, that kind of struck me is Linda's on here. She's fourth on the list, and we'll go back to the jockey. I don't uh, – Jose Lascano, there's one New York guy. Yeah. Uh, you're also doing uh, picks for Belmont at Aqueduct. Uh, so I know you're paying attention to what's going on at Naira, as you always do. Uh, is that just that much more competitive among the horsemen that no one is really that hot among the jockeys and trainers? They're all just sharing. Yeah, a lot them. of – well, Linda Rice couldn't win a race at the Belmont Spring Meet, and then she caught fire at Saratoga, and her horses have continued to run really well at Belmont at the Big A, also known as Aqueduct. So it's no surprise <laughs> she's on there. A lot of guys have started off slow, though. I mean, Pletcher's like three for 28, 27, or four for 27 or something like that. And a lot of guys – I mean, Chad Brown's winning all the turf races like usual, but a lot of guys, have, I feel like, have started off pretty slow with that meet. They've run um, – the cards have been okay. There's been a lot of dirt claimers, but obviously this weekend with the big Breeders' Cup preps, you'll, I'm sure some of the big guys will come out firing. That's why they call him the Prince of Segways as well because uh, life is good, who could get <laughs> – I would expect – will be one to five, one to 10 uh, for Todd Pletcher. I mean, they're saying a very short field going to try to uh, oppose uh, who I would say is the second best horse in training to my eye uh, behind flight line. And uh, this is a, a key prep for him. I'm not sure, you know, what they'll find out at one to five against two or three others, but uh, you know, obviously Todd's going to want to see something that says, yeah, let's go to the classic. 
Well, yeah, if you remember last year, too, he ran in the Kelso, and the Kelso was absolutely a horrendous field. But he didn't – he got like a 105 or 106, yeah, nothing was, crazy. I remember people saying that. Yeah, and it was kind of – it kind of feels like a similar route this year. Like, uh, you know, he – Todd's not Todd's fault or life is good that nobody wants to run against him. So he's going to run against, I think, literally three or four horses. But, you know, if he wins easily, he's had no problem with nine furlongs. He won, he won the Pegasus easily, won the Whitney – um, but if he wins and he doesn't get a 120 buyer like flight line, it's not really a big deal in my opinion because he's it, the race is the classic. I think they're pointing for. So you know, if he wins by a couple links, three or four links, and he gets a 106 or seven, I wouldn't really worry about it because the same thing happened. Now, obviously, flight line wasn't in the dirt mile last year, but I think this is a good prep for him going two turns because they have to run in the classic if they they're not running the dirt it would be a disaster if they run in the so as well and uh i actually i fell into the trap last year um as a sheets player and just all the chatter not that i missed out on anything great at whatever he was in the the dirt mile he was the favorite but i definitely went that was one race i'm gonna try to beat this horse and there was an Asmussen in there I liked, and I forget who else, but clearly that was the wrong uh, move because I thought that was one of the best performances of the year. Yeah, and he's almost kind of like forgotten about at this point, like because of how good fly lines race. So it's kind of a what have you done, lay me for me sport anyway. So then, you know, I had Taba had the big race, and everybody's on him going into the classic. So he's kind of forgotten about, him, but I mean, he is, uh, I know he didn't win in Dubai, it's a mile and a quarter, but. I got a feeling. I'm not saying he's beating fly line, but I have a feeling. You know, everything gets to the classic. I got a feeling he's going to run a big one. I'm not saying he's going to win, but I feel like this is a good prep for him to get to the classic. Yeah, not, I almost. Uh, I mean, you, you know, I'm a flight line backer, um, and and I do not even at the disparity in prices they would be for see myself going the life is good route against flight line, but. If Flightline weren't in this race, I'm loving Life is Good because I think so many people are, you know, you're going to hear about the World Cup and, oh, he doesn't want 10 furlongs. Well, we heard that with Nick Sko, too, and he blitzed him last year. And I think Life is Good, Sands Flightline, could do the same. Unfortunately, Flightline is in this race. so uh, but, but if he's not, I would not hesitate to play Life is Good in the Classic at 3-1. to one. No. And, and he's going to be on the front. Like, people know flight line is fast, but life is good as a quarter horse out of the gate. I mean, he breaks, and he's two links in front of everybody. Obviously, with flight line chasing, it's a little different scenario. He's going to have to he's going to have to really kick for home at Keeneland. But Keeneland, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be speed favoring, but their Breeders' Cups on the dirt have been pretty speed favoring. At least yeah, the one during COVID was with Nick's go. And, I mean, they're pretty souped up tracks for speed. But I think there was like three track records that weekend, I feel yeah. like. so. No, I mean, the two classics, we've had American Pharaoh in a race where I actually thought Authentic. Uh, the, the Clement horse, mm-hmm. the Belmont States winner, I'm trying to buy a tonalist. Tonalist? So I had a shot. Honor Code didn't show up. American Pharaoh basically galloped on the front end. And then Authentic, very similar as well. So... Uh, well, we know why you know why American Pharaoh galloped on the front end. Well, it was a setup. Well, Liam's map also didn't run in the class. Oh, right. so that changed. Which, that. Yeah, that changed that whole race because American Pharaoh's probably not beating Liam's map. To, or I don't know. I shouldn't say not beating him, but it would have made that race was totally kind of different a race. Around. Yeah, which, which is yeah. why none of us want to see life is good in the dirt mile. Yeah, 100%. It sounds like everybody's going. I mean, Bill Mott said Olympiad's going. I'm sure Happy Saver, Hot Rod Charlie, all those horses from this weekend will be going from the Lucas Classic. So yeah. it looks like well, everybody's going to take Speaking of that, um, the home of your uh, 20% flat bet profit, uh, ROI, Churchill Downs. Rich Strike, the Derby winner, uh, also, according to his trainer, needs to earn his way into the Classic. Uh, don't give him any chance to be competitive against flight line or life is good, but we all know having a a derby winner at the breeders cup is a big deal. Uh, would certainly add some spice. I, I hope he runs well. I mean, I don't think he's as good as any of these, but the Travers was a step forward and it adds a little bit of intrigue to have him show up here. Yeah. And you got to respect the connections because they actually are running their horse. They're going to plan for this race against Olders. And then, the, like you said, they might try the classic. He did improve in the Travers. 
but it's a big step running against older horses, regardless of how good Epperson ran. These are, you know, you have, I mean, how about Charlie never wins, but he's a legit, he's run legit buyers in the past. So, you know, happy savers, the closest horse to ever come to flight line. I lost to him by six links. So there's a lot of good, and our collector's coming, I saw as well. So yeah. I don't think this is an easy spot for Rich Strike, but I actually think he's a legit good horse. I just don't know if he's up to par with these horses, but I think he's, he's kind of showed that he's, Proved that he's a the Derby was you know a good setup, but his Travers kind of showed that he's he's a good horse. Yeah, and uh, look, you know, I, I would say Epicenter is the leader now, uh, but Taba Rich Strike, depending on what they do, could certainly uh, still leapfrog him. More likely Rich Strike, just because he has the Derby win and the fact that they're you know willing to to go here and then maybe look at the Breeders' Cup. Uh, I appreciate uh, the, the competitiveness uh, a lot more than when they, you know, basically had the one race between the Derby and the Travers. So uh, we'll see. I mean, they're, they're going to give them a shot at least. Yeah. And I think, I think the three-year-old picture is going to come down to Taba and Epicenter. They both have, no, oh, Yeah. They both no. Taba has two grade ones and it's Epicenter has one. Yeah. He's showed up in the pre. <laughs> he's ran, he ran well in the Derby and the Preakness. And then he had those good races at the fairgrounds. So I think it's going to just come down to probably who runs the best in the classic. I could be wrong about that, but that's kind of what it feels like at this point. After Taba's big one, before that race, you would have set up a center. But now with Taba, I feel like that classic is going to – who will decide three old honors. Yeah, one of those uh, similar to way back uh, in 02, like Farda Amiga finished second to Azari in the distaff, and that was, was good enough to get her three-year-old Philly – honors that year mm-hmm. and i could foresee a, a similar situation this year where being a good second buying flight line will just kind of be considered a win among the three-year-olds um so yeah a lot on the line in the class uh, spirit esque last year in the classic right yeah exactly uh where ran for second ran a good second and uh yeah the other three-year-olds there with hot rod charlie and elusive quality essential quality Essential yeah, quality, yeah. It was I, I knew what you meant. EQ. Though. Yeah, I knew what you meant. Uh, yeah. Five days left at Churchill, so uh, the Prince looking to beat the meat. He's up 20% so far, so hopefully uh, keep that going. Maybe even lengthen the advantage. And uh, the Breeders' Cup prep race is on Saturday. ACAC, Lucas Classic. Mandatory payout Sunday. Uh, should there be a – well, it's mandatory payout no matter what, but maybe a little carryover will build. So – Plenty of action left at Churchill. Any last thoughts uh, before we shift east to Keeneland? Um, no, not really. You have all the big – I think you got the Frisette, the Champagne at Aqueduct this weekend, so I think we'll get a better gauge on a lot of these Breeders' Cup um, races after this weekend. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, for sure, and uh, certainly looking forward to Keeneland. Again, if you uh, sign up for the Keeneland meat package, which is available now, the link's at the bottom there. You get all of Churchill this week for free, which will include those prep races Saturday, mandatory payout Sunday, plenty of action throughout the week as well. And uh, we'll talk next week uh, and open up Keeneland. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me as always. That's the plan from here. He's David. I'm Ed. Good luck this week.